The shared workbook feature allows two or more people to work in the workbook at the same time, where if you don't turn this feature on, then only one person can make changes to it, and everybody else, when they try to open it up, gets a little prompt that says read only, where they can only read the workbook. They can't make changes to it. Well, they could, but it won't overwrite the original workbook. They have to save it as a copy. So if you do want somebody to overwrite the original workbook, in other words, work on it at the same time you're working on it, then to turn on the feature, come up here and click on the Review tab, go to the Changes group and click on Share Workbook. Go ahead and check the box that allows changes by more than one user at the same time. This also allows workbook merging, which we'll talk about in a later training video, but right now we just want to be able to turn the feature on. And then it says, OK, who has this workbook open now? Well, of course, it's me. In other words, when I go ahead and turn this feature on and I put this uh, workbook on the network so everybody can have access to it, anybody who opens it in addition to me will list them here and I can take a peek to see who's uh, in it. We'll go over this later. And then we have the advanced tab that has more features to sharing than just sharing the workbook. You can actually keep track of all the changes that you or anybody else makes in the workbook. So you can have it keep track for 15 days worth or, you know, go down to 10 or up to 30, whatever you'd like. So that way, any changes that somebody makes in this cell changes it from 150 to 200. I can have that tracked or I can highlight it and find out what change was made and then either accept it or reject it, which we'll cover in just a minute. And then when it comes to updating the changes, in other words, if I'm working on it and then somebody else is working on it at the same time and they make changes when they save it, how can those changes come across so I can see what changes that they made? Well, I can either click on Save, which is the option here. So when I click Save, it'll pull through those changes or just have it done automatically every, well, you set the time. Then down below, if there's conflicting changes, like I make a change at one time, at the same time somebody else makes a change and we click Save, they're going to be conflicting. So do I want it to prompt me and ask which one wins or just have it as the first person that saves it wins? So. I'll leave it as Ask Me. And then, of course, you can include in your personal views, your print settings, and your filter settings. Now, there's one thing you need to know before you turn the sharing on this feature and click OK, is that it's going to limit some of the other features. Once it's turned on, you cannot delete your worksheets, and you also can't merge or split your cells. So get that out of the way before you go ahead and click OK. Once you click OK, it's going to say, OK, I'm going to turn this uh, shared feature on and save the workbook. Are you OK with that? Yes. How do you know it's shared? Well, there's two ways. One way is up in the title bar. It has in square brackets the word shared. And then the other way, of course, is that you've got the feature turned on, share workbook, that you can click on and go, oh, it's checked. It's now sharing. So now that I have the feature turned on, I need to make this workbook available on the network so I can tell everybody else to uh, access it. I'm going to come up here, click on the File tab, go to Save As, come over here in the Navigation pane, go to the network, and then find a folder, double click. Let's do the share folder, click save, and there we go. Now I can go ahead and tell Carrie to make changes to it. And then after she's done making changes to it, if I want to see those changes, of course I can close out and open it back up, but as we just went over, one of the features is that when I click save, it'll automatically update my workbook and pull those changes across. Now, where are they? Well, it's got a light. A green border around the cells that she made changes to. It's not a really standout color, but so when I hover over it, you can see who made the change, when they made the change, what the previous value was. It was 350, and now they changed it to 200. If I like the change, well, then don't do anything. If I don't, the moment I do anything within the workbook, all these other highlights or changes will no longer be highlighted. But that's okay. I'll show you how you can re-highlight them. For example, if I go, you know, I really, let me hover over it, I really like 350, so I'm just going to go ahead and go 350 and hit enter. The moment I make a change, all the other highlights go away. So if I want to bring those back to finish my review, that's one way to review the changes, is to highlight the cells. Come back up here to the Review tab to the Changes group, click on Track Changes, and there's two ways. You can highlight the cells or actually go right to the cells where the changes were made and accept or reject them. The highlighting is harmless because you're not really reviewing them. Where the accept and reject, you're reviewing them, and if you accept or reject it, it's done. It won't keep track of that change anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight them, and then it says, well, first of all, by default, it's going to have it checked. That track changes while editing, which also shares the workbook. I mean, you can come in here and turn it on. In other words, that's another way to uh, share your workbook as opposed to just clicking on share your workbook. 
it's a, a combination. You can share your workbook and also keep track of changes. If you don't want to keep track of changes and share your workbook, you can uncheck that. But for right now, let's just go ahead and have it highlight the changes on the screen. Since when? Since I last saved it? No. Since those that I have not yet reviewed, which I haven't reviewed and until I actually pull down that second option to accept or reject. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where it'll actually say that you've reviewed it, which we'll do that in just a second. Go ahead and click OK. It highlights all the cells that the changes were made to, including my own. See, mine's in a dark blue when I hover over it. It says Kurt Kershaw made the change to this cell from 200 to 350, and then, of course, Carrie Heffernan. So I can go through all this, and if I decide to um, revert the change from 105 back to 150, go ahead. It doesn't unhighlight the cells. It just changes it because now I've made the change and it's keeping track with its own color around it, signifying that that's me, that I made the change. And of course, I still can see Carrie right here. In fact, if you get lost because some of these colors are really faded and you're like, gosh, you know, I've got thousands of rows here. Is there a particular column or row that the change has been made in? You'll notice that up in the column header that uh, the letters I and K are the same color until you hit a column that has a uh, change in it, in which case you got, I guess it's a burgundy color. Also, if you look at the rows, the rows that have changes in it are burgundy as well, the numbers. So that's one way to kind of figure out which row has a change in it, and then just move over it until it pops open. I mean, the color is so light, you might miss it. Then, of course, if you don't want to see these highlights anymore, click on the drop-down arrow, go to Highlights, uncheck it, click OK, and the changes are still there until we decide to, let me click on the drop-down arrow, accept or reject changes. But before I do that, let me click on the Share Workbook to show you that I'm in it, and also Carrie. Now, if I don't like Carrie making changes in there, select it, Go ahead and click on Remove User, and it'll boot her out, which coincidentally, she can do that to me too, so we won't do that now, but if somebody annoys you, you can remove them just to give them a good laugh here. They can always, of course, uh, join back in. They just have to open up their workbook, so it'll annoy them. In any case, let me click Cancel. Let's do this. Track Changes to Accept or Reject. It'll now save the workbook, so we're starting from scratch. When do we want to uh, see these changes, those changes that we haven't yet reviewed, or click on the drop-down arrow uh, from a specific date. We'll just go over those changes we haven't yet reviewed. When I click OK, it'll take me to the first cell, B4, and it'll have the original value, the value that Carrie changed it to, and then the value that I changed it back to, which was the original value. Go ahead and select which value you want it to be, and go ahead and accept it, and say we'll have it at 105 changes it to 105, then here's the other values. Do I want to accept it? Because there's more than two options here, you don't get the reject option. In other words, if I didn't go in and monkey with it, it would have both the accept and reject. But because I have a couple of different options, then it's just a matter of accepting one of these, and I'll accept that one. Then if I go ahead and close out of it now, those ones that I accepted are automatically cleaned up. In other words, I can't pull them back. So if I go track changes to accept or reject, and I say those that are not yet reviewed and click OK, it jumps right to that cell. It doesn't pick these two cells up because they've already been worked through. Even if I say not yet reviewed and I choose a date, today, yesterday, a week ago, it's done. So just make sure you're comfortable with this before you go ahead and erase that history by accepting it or rejecting it. So here's one. Carrie changed it on this date, changed it from in J8, and you can move it, there's J8, from 175 to 125. We'll go ahead and reject it so it goes back to 175. Then, of course, when I'm done, I'll be sure to save my work here. Okay, let me show you what a conflicting change looks like. If I go ahead and have Carrie make a change to, let's say, cell B4, she changes it to 1 and then saves her work, and then I go ahead and change it from, let's say, to 2. The moment I go ahead and click Save, it prompts me, it says, look, Carrie changed it from 105 to 1, and then you went ahead, before you saved it, to pull her change over, made a change, and changed it to 2. So do you want to accept yours or hers? And then if there are many changes, you can say accept all of mine or accept all the others. So I'll say, well, I like hers, let's accept the other. And then click OK, hover over it, and of course it has her tagged to it as making the change. And then, as I mentioned, um, if I want to go ahead and turn off the Share Workbook, I can click on the uh, button here and uncheck it. Well, I'll show you what it looks like now if somebody bumps you out of the workbook. If they go ahead and I have Carrie take and select my name and go ahead and say Remove User, 
and it will give you a prompt that says if you go ahead and uh, remove the user let me let me go ahead and show you here it says if the user you select is currently editing the workbook it will prevent them from saving the workbook and they will have unsaved work that will be lost are you really that mean you could say no but maybe she is and she'll go ahead and click OK and so let me close out and if I make a change here and type in 5 or something and then click save it's like uh, you're no longer connected another user may have removed you from it now it could be something mean that they did or that they just want to make a change they don't want me touching it until I get a chance to look and see those updates kind of as a reminder and it wants me to when I click OK to save it as something else but I won't kind of as a reminder to say hey look I made a change don't mess with it and they booted me out in any case let me go ahead and uh, close out of this and not save it and open it back up again you can click on file and it's the most recent uh, one on my network click on it to open it back up and I'm now connected how do I know click on share workbook and you can see that well I'm in there as well as Carrie if I don't want to share this anymore uncheck it click OK and it says the action it's just like removing other users it'll prevent them from making changes to it and it'll also uh, the history will be erased in other words you're totally disconnecting if we say yes you can see up in the title bar it's no longer shared thanks for watching hey as a quick reminder if you like my video please give it a thumbs up you can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos and for only two dollars a month you get online access to all my training or for downloads and DVDs, please visit me at dreamforce.us.